power and wealth come from new technologies. Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie. Thank you for clicking on my YouTube channel. My review today and personal takeaway is of the 2012 nonfiction book, The Race for What's Left, The Global Scramble for the World's Last Resources by author Michael T. Clear. This book is a good read if you want to feel scared and frightened of what is happening now and in the near future. Essentially, the book is about the fact that the world's natural resources have been severely depleted and that we are at the end of the easy resource world. Okay, the main point of the book is summed up by a sentence near the top of page 215. Every key player, I think this refers to multinationals and countries, I'm not sure. Every key player in the race for what's left will do whatever it can to advance its own position while striving without mercy to eliminate or subdue all the others. That's a little frightening. Let's talk about gas. Gas and oil exploration has become much more invasive, such as drilling at the Arctic seafloor, made less expensive by the melted ice caps, yay, less expensive for corporations, and more invasive politically, such as drilling in war-torn areas of Africa. However, this could bring much needed jobs to the area. That's not in the book though. The author makes a succinct case that power and wealth come from new technologies. The inference made is that a successful interrupter could change everything. This book offers what I think is a realistic and hopeful outlook for the future. The rare earth elements, abbreviated as REE, which are used by the high-tech industry and mostly produced in China, extracting these elements from composites of several elements releases radioactive material into groundwater and land. The financial cost to produce this with the safety of citizens in mind is very high. That probably explains why it hasn't been produced in the U.S. for a long time. Now this part is not in the book, but my opinion is that with no financial incentive for governments or corporations to follow regulations, expect more and more leaks of the radioactive kind. Not comforting news if you live in Las Vegas, 60 miles away in Mountain Pass, California, according to the book, a corporation was going to revive a mine that had been abandoned in 2002 due to costs associated with safe mining. According to Wikipedia Now, and this is not in the 2012 book, 600,000 gallons of radioactive and hazardous waste material flowed onto the desert floor between 1984 and 1998, mostly due to pipes bursting several times. Interestingly, during cleaning, the mine passed an inspection in 2007. Not sure if that necessarily means it was cleaned up. Mining over there in Mountain Pass, California did start up again in 2018 by a consortium of two U.S. investment firms and a minority Chinese shareholder. My opinion, not in the book, is that possibly there was a waiver for the regulation or regulations were already changed. Now on to farming, or as some people say, food. There is what the book calls a land grab. Government-backed agricultural companies buy up arable land around the world to grow food to ship back home. My opinion, not in the book, is that also, or maybe instead, to sell to the highest bidder. If you have a multinational, what is their home country? Also not in the book, let's hope that the farming land is not near fracking or deep earth drilling, which also produce hazardous waste materials that seep into land and water. Oh well, whatever. Anyway, this book, The Race for What's Left, The Global Scramble for the World's Last Resources by author Michael T. Clear is an excellent overview of the end of the easy resource world with some in-depth details to keep you and your friends up at night, which is great if you all like to use the phone at the same time. However, from pages 227 to 234, the end of the book, before the 53 pages of notes and 15 pages of index, the author makes a succinct case for a race to adapt as compared to a race to deplete and that the first to come up with quote new materials methods and devices will reap the rewards and that power and wealth come from new technologies the argument being that in the end new technologies and the economics of innovation will outperform the economics of procrastination which subscribes to the fact that scarcity of necessities drives prices sky high the inference made is that a successful interrupter could change everything this book offers what i think is a realistic and hopeful outlook for the future safety and security for us average citizens, and increasing profits for countries and corporations. Win-win all the way. The last few pages even offer hope to someone like me, and that is saying a lot. As such, I give this book four and a half out of five stars. My name is Stephanie. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate all of that. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you again on the next video.